checklist provides simple and easy access to common functionality in your applications. As an example, if we right click the Thunderbird icon in the launcher, we can see compose a new message. If we click on that, the new message window appears. Another example of this is Chromium. If we right click this, we can see we can open a new window. We even provide quick lists for things such as the dash, where we can access the different types of lenses, such as applications. Quick lists are simple and easy to add to your application in a matter of minutes. The indicators in Ubuntu provide a fantastic way to integrate your application neatly into the desktop. As an example, if we click the messaging menu, we can see there's different types of messaging here, from chat to broadcast, to email and other services such as IRC. Clicking on the broadcast option shows us Gwibber, which is a social networking client. Inside here you can see the number of messages, replies and private messages that Gwibber has to show you, all from within the same menu. We have other indicators such as the power indicator showing you your battery charge, the networking indicator showing different wireless networks, and this is the sound menu. Here, we've got Rhythm Box open, playing the fun-loving criminals. And when we play it, you can see that the album art and the track title neatly integrates into the menu. We also provide transport controls, so you can flick through different songs, and of course the new songs pop up as notify OSD bubbles. Each of these different features, from the notify OSD bubbles to the integration in the messaging menu and the sound menu, is easy to add to your application. We also provide other indicators, such as the date and time menu, the me menu, and the device menu. And if you want a specific indicator for your application, you can add that too. Here's an example of the indicator that I'm using for the screencasting software I used to record this. Indicators are simple and easy to add to your applications, whether dedicated or to integrate neatly with the desktop. The launcher provides some subtle yet powerful functionality that your applications can harness. As an example, let's load up Thunderbird. We load up Thunderbird and I'm going to send myself an email. When the email arrives, you not only see the Notify OSD bubble pop up, but you also see a little number inside of the icon on the launcher. This provides an easy way of showing the number of unread emails. This functionality provides a useful means of showing status changes in your applications, such as the number of emails that may have come in, the number of social media messages that may have arrived, or the number of private messages that may have appeared in a chat client. This is not only displayed in the launcher, but also in the messaging menu as well. Another example of this is if we load up Nautilus, the file manager. I'm now going to drag this file onto a network resource. I'm going to transfer this file to a machine on the internet. When I do this, we not only see the file operations dialog, but we also see an embedded progress indicator that appears inside the launcher itself. Once again, this provides a means of showing status of your application without having to distract the user. All of this functionality is simple and easy to implement into your applications. An important part of any desktop experience is how you access functionality in applications. And we spend a lot of time improving and refining how menus work. Fortunately, if you've written your application using GTK or Qt or some other platforms, you get all of these benefits for free. As an example, let's load up Firefox. When Firefox loads, the menus fade on for a second and then fade off. We don't show the menus all the time so it doesn't clutter up the display. You can now browse through the menus and they're always in the same place, in the top bar. Now let's load up Thunderbird. Once again, the menus fade on for a second and then fade off. And again, you can access the menus up here. A powerful feature that we've built into the desktop is called the heads-up display. As an example, if we look through these menus in Firefox, there's lots of different options there. This is good for browsing, but if you know what you want, you want a really fast way of accessing it. So all you need to do is hit the Alt key and the heads-up display appears. When the display appears, you can search for something that's in that application, such as preferences. And we can access the preferences dialog instantly. We can also search for bookmarks. In Firefox, we can even search for specific websites, such as Gmail. 
The HUD not only searches menus in your application, but also in the system indicators as well. As an example, if we hit the Alt key and do a quick search for wireless, you can see that we see the different wireless options in the networking indicator. We can also, from the very same interface, search for bookmarks, which is within Firefox. This provides a simple, quick, and easy access to all of the menu functionality in your application and the different system indicators, all without having to modify your application for Ubuntu. One of the most powerful components in the desktop is the Dash. The Dash provides a means to find anything you need online and on your computer. The Dash is broken into a variety of different lenses, with each lens showing a different type of content, such as applications, files, music, or videos. Within each lens are a variety of different scopes, with each scope showing a different data source for those different types of categories, such as YouTube as a source for videos. The Dash and its lenses and scopes are completely extensible, and you can produce lenses and scopes for anything you can dream of. Let's look at a few examples. You can load the Dash by clicking the Ubuntu icon in the launcher. Here we see the Home lens, which shows different types of content that we've been looking at recently. If we click the Applications lens, you can see different types of applications on our computer and available to download. Each one of these different categories is a scope. We can now use the filter results to apply different types of filtering to all of the scopes, including the ones that we can download and the ones on our computer. These expanders allow us to see fewer and more results. Let's now take a look at the videos lens. If we do a quick search here for Ubuntu, this will search Ubuntu online across a variety of different online video providers. This view shows all of the different results collated. We can now use filter results to drill down to different types of sources. Each one of these is a different scope. Here we can see different results for Vimeo. We can also see different results for YouTube education. And of course, we can combine them, so we can see YouTube Education and Vimeo. Clicking on one of these results, we'll then load it into Firefox, and we can see it. This shows the true power of lenses and scopes for finding content that you're interested in, online and offline. And you can create lenses and scopes for anything you want.